recording chair. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I'd like to welcome members of the public and committee to tonight's meeting of the Town Council Planning Committee. Um, who's got their microphone? I'm getting a lot of feedback from somebody. Right. We will start tonight with audience participation. Um, we have got a few rules. A lot of you want to talk tonight, I know, and there's a quite passionate subjects on tonight um, who want to talk about. Um, when I invite you to talk, well, I'll mute you and you'll have two minutes. Uh, when you've got 10 seconds left to go, I will raise my hand so you know that you can start to wrap up your argument. We get to two minutes, we will have to, uh, to stop you because a lot of people to talk tonight. Um, in regards to any statements or questions, again, we, we don't have a right to uh, reply to you. If it is about the site allocation document that you are talking about tonight, that is in the agenda tonight. So we won't be able to answer any questions as that is part of the, uh, the agenda items. Um, okay, so I've got a list of people that want to talk. So I'm going to go with the list first. If anybody else wants to talk, they can make themselves known to me uh, after the people have done it. I'll ask a question and then we'll go from there. So could we please start with uh, Jeremy Clark from Felbridge Parish Council, please. Good evening. Um, I wanted to make you aware that the transport study supporting the DPD states that Star Junction is currently operating at only 73% of capacity and that delays at peak hours on the Copthorne Road approach to the junction are less than 30 seconds with an average of only two cars queuing. That's not a junction I recognise. This is very different to the TDC local plan submitted for examination that has already stated the junction is at 107% capacity with delays of three minutes and 48 cars queuing. The TDC figures compare well with the planning inspectorate who independently determined that the junction was at 112% capacity in 2018. I therefore believe that the DPD transport data is unsound. In the light of their unsound transport study, MSDC have determined that neither SA19 or SA20 themselves would have a significant impact upon the junction and therefore they do not have to provide mitigation before delivery of the site. There is an acknowledgement that cumulative impact upon the road network will exist and both sites have to contribute to the A264, A22 corridor project if that project is brought forward. The corridor project is not included in the DPD. It has been extracted and therefore is not an integral part of the delivery of the DPD. West Sussex Highway's response to the consultation was the DPD should acknowledge the possibility that improvements may not be deliverable at the Felbridge Junction. So even the Highway Authority is questioning the viability of delivering junction improvements. You all heard from the promoters of the important site about the resulting sh shorter journey times along the A22. That statement is solely based upon the delivery of the corridor project. So in conclusion, the A22, A264 corridor improvements have been excluded from the DPD because according to MSDC, they are not necessary as the relevant junctions are not made severe by the proposed development of SA19 or SA20. Thus adoption of the DPD would enable the development of these sites while Sussex and Surrey highways may decide in the future that no viable scheme exists to really mitigate the already severe road network. This is another case of build with houses and then hope that someone finds a way to solve the traffic congestion. I also have the understanding that Regulation 19 is a process of finding unsoundness rather than repeating our comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next one I've got that wants to speak is uh, Mrs. Hall, please. Why can't we see anything? Sorry, did you hear that or not? Oh, I can hear you now though, Sandra. Sorry, my question is, do the committee support overbearing development? Um, did you hear it or not? 
We did hear that. Uh, do you have a statement to make to go with that at all? No, it's just my question. One question. I mean, obviously it relates to, um, you know, um, the question tonight on for the moorings. Uh, but it's for the committee. Do the committee support overbearing development? Okay, thank you. Um, I think we can generally answer that we wouldn't support overbearing development uh, if it was out of line with uh, any of the current neighbourhood plan, district plan or national planning framework. Um, if it wasn't compliant with that, then we wouldn't support it. Um, but obviously something being overbearing can be subjective as well as, uh, as, as, as policy compliant. So every, that's why every case is taken on a case by case basis rather than a generalisation. Um, next person, could I have uh, Mr. Mockford, please? Oh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes? We can, sir. Okay. okay, re agenda item seven, that's DM 20 stroke 3002 stroke 3. Um, I would like to ask the co committee to consider this application separately and recommend it for refusal for the following reasons. I'm objecting to this application on the grounds that the report has not been carried out in a correct manner. The report is not 100% clear on what the problem is. Uh, this 300 year old tree is of high amenity value. Although a TPO is present, there are no proposals for planting a replacement tree and no reasons for not wanting to replant. This is a requirement under the TPO's requirements. At worst, in my opinion, only a few limbs need to be removed to maintain the balance of the tree and then monitor the tree over the coming years. Therefore, good hygiene, reasonable work practice must be carried out to ensure the reduction of the spread of the disease on an affected tree. Clearing the site of all debris following any works is crucial. It is noted that the words play area have been inserted on the drawing Please note this is not an authorised play area by MSDC. This tree has been earmarked for removal due to a possible Syracoccus blight infection. What is not immediate obviously with this tree are cankers on branches, changes in bark colour i.e. green to red stroke purple, together with a reduction in branch diameter. It is however reported by the Royal Society uh, that the trees infected with Syracoccus blight can, be, can live for many years and that it is unlikely that infected trees will need to be felled. This application needs to be refused and reviewed. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bockford. Next person that I've got listed that wants to talk is uh, Kevin Yeo, please. Hello. Hello. I, I'm here as an observer tonight. I didn't put a question to you, so I'm here purely as an observer. Oh, okay. Listening to the um, motion that will come up on DM 202826, 20, I just want to know your feelings regarding the committee on this application. Okay, my mistake. I thought you wanted to speak. Sorry. Not a problem. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, anybody else want to speak uh, tonight? Could they make themselves clear by raising their hand or putting a little hand symbol up? That would be most useful. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gunnage, I believe it is down the bottom there. I can see just put his hand up. Uh, like yes. <clears throat> um, can, can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, I'm new to Zoom. I've never used this thing before, so you'll have to excuse me if I don't know where all the buttons are and how it all works and stuff. Uh, I'm Will, and uh, I've put Gullidge there because I live at Gullidge House, which is um, in East Grinstead, just by the proposed housing development. Uh, so I wanted to, perhaps when we get onto the subject of that, I think it's a SA20, the 550 houses that is uh, being considered for approval in the uh, basically in the field next to where I live so I wanted to have a say on that uh, as and when is uh, the correct time to do so 
I think you probably joined the meeting a little bit late. Uh, well, the, this is the time the public are allowed to speak. Uh, when the meeting actually commences and the public can't have an input then, but you do, if you want to have a, a say on it now, this is your time to have it. You can have two minutes to speak on that subject now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't have all the technical details in front of me and the notes and stuff, but I just wanted to put my, my thoughts across um, that I've lived here since uh, 1975. Um, I'm sitting outside now just enjoying the peace and quiet and the birds and the skylarks and, and, and stuff that's above me right now as I speak. Um, but if I was to look, you know, a few meters that way, I can see a gateway into a field, which is where they're proposing to fill it up with 550 houses and, and no, no building of anything like that scale has ever happened around here. Um, my current nearest neighbour is half a mile away and that's just a farmhouse and a couple of farm cottages that have been there since you know the dawn of time pretty much. So I'm very concerned that it's uh, out of character with the area and the area can't, can, can't um, sustain it and the traffic would be ridiculous and that's not even taken into account whether the sewage system can take a huge increase in the number of properties in the town and um, it would absolutely ruin this area and everyone who walks around this area enjoys it very much and is um, very concerned about it. Well, everyone I spoke to is very concerned about it. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, is anybody else wishing to make any comments at all tonight? We've got a, one last speaker we can fix in. Yeah, Mr. Ryan saw his hand up. Can I just make you aware that it is 12 minutes past seven? Yeah, so one, we can have one more speaker in. Uh, in that case, uh, Mr. Ryan, if you would like to please uh, unmute and you can have uh, two minutes. Just a secretary. Hello, Mr. Ryan. Sorry, my apologies. Is that working? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Great, thank you. I just wanted to follow up on what um, Will from Gulledge was saying. Um, I'm also very interested and somewhat concerned about the potential developments in the area. I, I've had a look at some, a lot of the plans, um, and actually some of them look very, very good. There are some very interesting uh, and useful um, developments there. Uh, there's some lots of things that have been thought out very well. Um, one of the big issues I've got, is, and I think many people have, is on the traffic. Now, from what I understand, and again, unfortunately, I'm on the mobile and the, uh, I don't have all the details here. There seems to be a huge discrepancy in the traffic survey that was done recently from the original proposal, I think Mid-Sussex did, compared to what uh, Tandridge Council did on the junction between the A22 and the A264. Uh, off the top of my head, I think the one that Mid-Sussex did said it was about 64% capacity, whereas the Tandridge one said it was 106% capacity. Um, and the Mid-Sussex data was about 10 years old, it was from 2008 originally. Um, so there's lots of inconsistencies um, that I think need to be addressed and just looked at a little bit more. Um, there's also obviously the environmental issue um, and actually the need for the houses about who they're going to supply. Because as I understand it, they're supposed to be built where there's employment. But I can't see where any employment in East Grinstead is going to be created. If anything, it's going to be probably more the Crawley area, so there's going to be an overflow from Crawley, in which case there's going to be more traffic going through that junction, which is already a horrific bottleneck. Um, and I just can't, I think there must be better locations for that development. Um, and if not, I think there are some fundamental infrastructure issues that need to be addressed before it's just signed off. Thank you very much, Mr. Ryan. That was your two minutes. Thank you very much for coming and uh, you. giving your points tonight. Thank you. Okay, committee, it's now 7.15 and uh, as per planning orders, we must move on to item two of the agenda. Thank you for everyone that spoke tonight for coming in and giving your views. 
Um, we shall move on to item two, which is um, uh, apologies for absence. Um, I would like to just point out that uh, Council Mrs. Belsey is absent as they're unwell. Um, is this reason accepted by committee? If so, could you put a little hand up, please? I just need to get that. She's approved. on holiday. She's on holiday. She's on holiday, is she? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, need me to read that. Okay, she's on holiday then. If they have that accepted as a reason, then please can we accept that in committee? We don't normally say on holiday. Um, we don't like to indicate that somebody's away for any length of time. We just normally say away. <laughs> she's away. <laughs> Um, can we do a digital? Could you put your actual put your um, physical hands up for this? Because we have got some slow Wi-Fi issues, uh, circling some people tonight. So uh, if you could, rather than putting your actual hand, could you press the button for us and it will flash up? <laughs> just... Dang it. Okay. Speaking, I think. Um... Whether it was Paul or someone doing, I mean, we came in on the end of it. Enough to accept, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've also had apologies of absence, please, Town Clerk, from. Uh, we've also had the Town Mayor, which we also need to accept, please, um, uh, Chairman. He's attending AGM as the Town Mayor this evening. And so we can we do Councillor Scott at the same time, or do we do them separately? Well, Councillor Scott, we will be noting his apologies. We don't know. The Unless, unless you've got a okay, can we please have town mayor's one hand, hands up, please? And can we note Tony Scott's absence, Councillor Scott's absence, please? Okay, thank you, Chrissy. Uh, item number three is to see the minutes held the last meeting, 24th. This is for accuracy. I'd like to propose them, please, and ask for a second, please. Councillor Bell, thank you. Um, can I have a show of hands in support of those minutes, please? And again, that's that's carried, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Item number four is to receive uh, members' declarations of interest. Um, anyone that has pecuniary interest will be turned to the waiting room where they cannot hear or see the discussions and then brought back in once that item has been uh, discussed. I will start. Um, I would like to declare an interest in... Um, number dm 20 2756 for the moorings um i know the uh the people that are objecting the neighbors so i would like to leave the room when that discussion is carried out please town clock uh councillor de bell please thank you chairman i'd like to declare an interest as a member of mid sussex district council planning committee uh, i reserve the right to change my opinion with further information at such a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Odi. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'd like to declare an interest in uh, DM 20 31 34. Please, I'd like to leave the room. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Belsey. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just to say in respect to this MSDC site allocation DPD that I am a cabinet member of Mid Sussex District Council just for the public so that they're aware. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any other district councillors that maybe want to declare an interest in that item for the discussion tonight? Sorry, I can't see. Councillor Mrs. Mockford, maybe? Do you want to me? Well, perhaps I should, yeah. I think perhaps as a district councillor, perhaps I should. Brilliant, thank you. Okay. Uh, I can't see any other hands up. Sorry, my internet is being very slow with everyone on there tonight. So uh, it is a bit jerky. So uh, I think have I missed anybody else, Town Clock? Uh, not that I've noticed. Just Councillor Debell given his declaration as usual? He has, yes. Right, okay, that's fine. And in that case, I shall go on to item number five, which is Chairman's Announcements. Um, I'll keep this very brief tonight. Um, 
just so you know, that we've had correspondence from the residents of the Old Mill Cottage uh, on Hill Place Farm development that uh, some concerns have been raised to Mid Sussex and copied to us uh, about some of the stability of the land, various reports sent through. Um, we're just keeping an eye on this with the, uh, with the Herentai councillors just to keep you aware that there are uh, reports going back and forward about, about that on this, uh, at this stage. Um, okay, item number six is the Mid Sussex uh, District Council site allocation DPD. This is to discuss uh, the East Midlands Town Council's draft response to the site allocation. And we're also going to discuss the white papers for the change of the planning system. These draft responses uh, will be published on the week commencing from the 7th. Uh, we did get them published on the 12th. Um, so if we can, if hopefully all of committee have seen them, um, I will be needing proposals and seconds on them, but if any councillors want to add anything further than the responses that they have already submitted um, and gone through that process with myself and the, the clerk to formalise formulate these, these drafts, if anybody wants to add anything or discuss any amendments to them at this stage, could they please make themselves known? Uh, Tank I'm struggling to see everyone. If you can see anyone's hands go up, I can't see if you could uh, let me know. Me? Can you see me? Oh, Councillor Osborne, yes, would you like to? Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm, uh, a councillor for this ward, um, and you won't, you won't be surprised to find that I'm vehemently opposed um, to these developments. Um, but first of all, can I just clear something? Um, is, everyone, if is everyone clear of the uh, traffic survey? that's been carried out by the two counties, Surrey, West Sussex, and also Mid Sussex and, uh, and Tandridge. Has anybody seen that full report? We have seen the surveys, yes. You've seen the full report? We have uh, gone through lengthy documents that have come through from the deep, attached to the DPD. Yeah, but have you seen that full report? Because that full report has been denied to some councillors. Uh, town clerk, has, do you, has, it, town, has town clerk seen it? You see the documents which are attached to the DPD. Which traffic assessment are you referring to, councillor? Uh, well, the, it's the it's the Felbridge Junction um, re, uh, is is mentioned in it, but it, it's the executive summary of the survey that was carried out by the four councils. Yeah, we've now, not we've not had anything fuller. You haven't seen it. So presumably none of our councillors have seen it. Is that correct? Well, we've, we've only issued out the consultation documents that have come out. It's not with those. So, so no, we've only, we've only got what we've got. Okay. So we're, so we are, this is the latest survey, the latest information on the implications of the traffic. And I suspect this survey that you haven't seen is the one that details the real impact of, of, accepting these um, development proposals, what would actually happen to the roads and happen to the adjoining properties and everything else. So presumably, we don't know that. So I don't see how we can support in any way, manner or fashion, um, these proposals. And I think we should actually oppose them outright completely with um, no ifs or buts. Because there's- Can I just ask there's an, there's an embargo on the information that we should have in order to come to a proper decision here. And um, we'd be buying a pig in a poke to in any way support this. Um, Coach Oswald, could I just clarify, have you read our um, response that we're talking about right now? Yeah, I saw it a little while ago. It was only sent out on Saturday. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, I've read that. Uh, and I'm Again, I'm confused because... Um, it's ambiguous in some respects to me because it doesn't okay. say we're opposing it. It's saying it's saying it ought to be we ought to be part of something, part of a discussion or whatever. Um, of course, that's shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted in some respect. So my view is, in order us for us to have a, a proper contribution at any inquiry, we have to oppose we have to oppose this tooth and nail. So you, I'm just, I'm sorry, just also for the members of the public who have seen it, 
that this is the uh, regulation 19 response, which is in addition. Yeah, and it's the one that's got to be, be in bullet, to, be in bullet 28, it's the Mid Sussex. Sorry, it's adding to our section 18 response, which does obviously refuse that. This is adding in some additional neighbourhood plan policy information. So this so is in. So, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, are you, are you telling me that we are we are opposing we are yes. opposing these developments outright? We are currently, yes. Okay. So, only just so, that just so that everybody knows and the public can hear, the ones who managed to get the yeah. only bit that we support is the section of the uh, of, of of the Imberhorn farm site where it complies with our neighbourhood plan in the merging of the two Imberhorn sites, which we outline in in our neighbourhood plan that we would support. Um, so, so this development does bring that forward. So that aspect we are in support of. Our neighbourhood plan does say that we wouldn't support development on this site. We are, however, mindful that this is a strategic site and therefore, uh, spe oh, sorry, the, the 550 homes is a strategic site and therefore does, in some regards, override the plan. But yeah. that, part of the plan we do, that bit we do support. The, the other bit we are objecting to. Okay. That's correct. So we're objecting and we're opposing 550 houses and we're opposing and objecting to 200 houses off the Crawley Down Road. Um, I think we're opposing, or certainly putting very stringent conditions in, in any building up at East Court. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. It is. Right, well, that's I'm, good. I'm I am correct on those uh, statements there on site, Town Clerk, just for record. All three of the uh, of the sites are at the moment non non provided by this council, which is the proposal in front of the committee tonight. Yes, because that's what the the draft consultation will, will say. I tell you why I say. I tell you why I'm so I'm I'm so uh, worked up, if you like, about this is because there's no indication from Mid Sussex, present or in the past, that they're concerned about our infrastructure in any manner whatsoever. In fact, the only thing they've done is to sell off the car park or propose to sell off the car park in Inver Hall Lane for even more houses. Now they're supposed to be representing East Grinstead, but it's my understanding it's very possible that we're taking on this extra housing. Um, to help Miss Sussex out, who are trying to help out Crawley, because Crawley can't meet their allocation. Um, and, and the idea of these houses is that they're, they're going to provide the accommodation for workers in Crawley. I've never heard such bloody nonsense. People won't be able to get out of East Quincy to get to Crawley to get to work. And at the same time, we are totally neglecting the business properties and the business opportunities in East Quincy by passing every damn application that comes up to close down an office and change into flats. I mean, the whole thing is, is a disgrace in my view. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Osborne. Um, go to Councillor Belsey, please. I'm sorry, Chairman, but I really object to the language that Councillor Osborne uses about sort of disgrace and um, the fact that uh, that uh, we are taking houses on behalf of Crawley and it's for Crawley workers. I mean. I don't know where he gets that from, to be honest. Uh, I think we all need to be very clear that the planning inspector set the number of houses for Mid-Sussex through to 2031. All the neighbourhood plans did not give enough housing for the, to meet the planning inspector's needs. If we don't meet that housing, then we run the risk of the district plan not being um, uh, having legal weight. If it doesn't have legal weight, then the risk we run is that all of the applications, regardless of wherever they are, are going to come forward anyway. So uh, I, I'm not quite sure why there is a, a need to bash um, the Mid-Sussex Mid in the way that Councillor Osborne has. Um, <clears throat> just in terms of, of those sites, I've read our, our response um, and I'm okay to, uh, you know, to, 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 um, to support the planning committee and the town council with the response. But it, it's really not correct to say that we're taking any houses on behalf of Crawley. As part of that overall number, we are required to take on an unmet need over the next 10 to 12 years 
for Brighton and Crawley as those towns expand beyond um, you know, their current geographical boundaries. And that was what was envisaged by the inspector that Mid-Sussex will need to take some extra growth uh, to, to take on board the employment opportunities in Crawley. And correct the matter and maybe say some of the background as to why we are in this position and that all tier one settlements, as well as other lower tier settlements, are taking a share of their houses. Uh, and it's all very well to say that East Grinch is being required to take these. We've actually, in the period, to, um, in the neighbourhood plans, we are taking less houses by far than uh, Burgess Hill and Haywards Heath. Um, and we're trying to share them across the district. So I think we do need to bear that in mind when making our response. And if we decide to oppose unequivocally all of um, the uh, all of the sites, we'll end up in the situation that the district plan fails and those sites will probably be built on anyway. Just need to bear that in mind. Thank you, Chairman. They're unsustainable. Surely it's understood they are unsustainable. Uh, 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 Councillor Osborne, Councillor Osborne, you have had your, your say. We can come back to you in a minute. Um, okay. Councillor Odie, you were next to raise your hand. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I totally understand uh, Councillor Osborne's uh, feeling and, and sentiment on this, and also see um, exactly what uh, uh, Councillor Belsey is is talking about as well. Um, I would just like to say that um, you know, thank you for putting that document together. Um, I do agree with the uh, what you've put in in that document to uh, uh, so far as the you know, declining or saying that we would refuse that. Um, but for my own um, sort of curiosity, really, is it just so that we have a, a larger say in what gets put forward um, in the future for those sites? Um, that's the first point. And secondly, um, I, as you probably are aware, I'd be very interested to see a slightly a larger section on uh, enabling active travel um, in that uh, section as well um, to really, you know, uh, help uh, people use their cars less. Yeah, thank you. I think it's good. Uh, it's obviously a very passionate subject and, and a very controversial subject and a huge, huge uh, impact on our town and community. Um, a few things that need to be made very clear that this is a Mid-Sussex District Council document uh, uh, in line with the planning inspectorate. This is not an East Gretzer Town Council document. We are one consultee on this. We have put forward a, uh, at the moment, an objection to these um, because they are not compliant with our neighbourhood plan. Our neighbourhood plan is still robust and still legal. We are aware of the pressures that are put on district councils by the planning inspectorate to build homes. That is not always a positive thing and is not always a negative thing. And as elected representatives of the town, it is our responsibility to make sure that anything that is built, anything that is brought forward, is brought forward for the very best of the town, not uh, ill-conceived is with, with the best infrastructure, the best transport in the best locations. And at the moment, some of these sites are definitely not that. Others are working closer to being better, but they are not right at the moment. And therefore we are in these documents. This is in addition to our, to our earlier comments, uh, trying to refuse them to make sure that we get, and we get the right discussions going forward to make sure that if anything does happen, we are at the forefront of making sure that we do the best that we can for East Grinstead. Not what's best for Mid-Sussex, not what's best for developers, what's best for East Grinstead and its residents. Uh, Councillor Dooley, if you'd like to uh, make a comment on that, please. Yeah, I, think, I, I mean, I, I agree with a number of things that have been said tonight. Um, I think we've, we've spoken very much about the A22 and the A264 and the surveys that have, seems to have been done on there, but there, there seems to be very little sort of talk about the, the actually Inverhorn Lane itself, which I know isn't a main road as such, but it is, it's gonna take a, a, a real beating as it appears there's only kind of one way in and out of this new development. And my concerns are that there doesn't seem to be any studies that have been taking place on the traffic that goes along there already, which from living in that area and traveling down that road many times in peak times, 
I know queues right the way back up almost at times as far as the, the, the refuse area. So my, my concerns are that what, what sort of studies are going to be done on, on the, the kind of the smaller roads that come off of that area, along with the studies that have been done on the A264 and the A22. So just like that's going to be highlighted about concern. I think it was something I brought up previously in discussions about that area, about, you know, traffic is, is a huge concern for all of us in, in that area at the moment, as has been highlighted by many of us at the moment. Um, but it's not just the main roads we need to consider, it's, it's the bigger picture around the area and how the infrastructure that we're going to ask for is going to take the weight off of that. Thank you. Um, I, I agree. And uh, Councillor Clark from Felbridge Parish Council, um, he, myself and the clerk and Felbridge, we, we, have worked, we have been working on cross-border communication. Uh, I know that Councillor Clark has been to our meetings in the past and um, the clerk and myself I'm very keen to work cross-border to make sure that transport concerns from, from Felbridge, Crawley Down, Turners Hill are, are included and we're all talking together, not working in our separate silos so that any, any, uh, any solution can be cross-border or our input can be spoken as one voice collectively than rather than, as I say, in, in, in silos. So we, we, we all know the problems, we all know the concerns and uh, we'll do everything we can to address those, but we are just one voice in this Absolutely. in this document um, we all if councillors who have taken the time to read the response and to read the uh, the actual DPD documents as well if if they are happy with the response then I would like to propose that um, could I have a second for the document as it is Councillor Bell thank you are there any other significant comments or relating really to our neighbourhood plan, which is where we need to be strengthening. It's the neighbourhood plan is what we use for our defence here. Any you comments said, related to the neighbourhood plan policy that we would like to add? You come. said I could come back, Mr Chairman. Yes, you can come back in this bit if you want to. Yeah, can I first of all say that I thought you said some very important things. You said that we were here to represent the resident, residents of East Grinstead. We are East Grinstead councillors. We're certainly not here to bail out in Sussex or anybody else or to go down a road because that is their problem to solve. It's not for the town council to do that. Now, we have, we have a situation where we have district councillors who also serve on the town council. But I don't know what hat they're going to wearing tonight, but I know which one I'm wearing. Um, I'm wearing uh, the hat that, that protects East Grinstead and speaks up for its residents. You've heard some of them tonight. Unfortunately, lots of residents out there are not really aware of the situation. And when they will be, if this virus situation continues, we're going to be at one hell of a disadvantage to have any form of democracy to deal with this. Because it's, it, it's incredibly worrying to me that um, this thing is going to slip, slip out of our fingers. We're going to end up with a situation where not only is the Felbish traffic lights um, totally um, unpassable, but you're going to find that the Imberhall Lane traffic lights, which are not included in this, from what I can see in this latest traffic survey, where, you, where if you look at it, you've got traffic joining from the north on the A22 coming up to the Imberhall traffic lights, so the situation will be even worse there. Now, we're already, uh, it's already pointed out by a member of, the pub, member of the public who joined us this evening, that we're already way over the top. Uh, it's no good John to bail nodding, uh, waving his head, uh, no, we are over the top. These, these, um, the traffic lights at Felbridge is already over capacity. Uh, Mid Sussex's ancient figures try to deny that, but if you look at the latest, latest figures produced by and released by Tandridge, you will see they're well over the top of that track. That. And that, in fact, is before you, you've, you've, you've built these houses and you haven't even got built all the other ones that have been passed and haven't been built yet in East Grinstead. The ones you, the ones, the ones you uh, mentioned earlier on Turner Hill Road. Um, there's a hell of a lot of housing to come apart from the ones we're talking about tonight. There yeah. are thousands. There are thousands of them. There are thousands of them. Okay. You need Thank to you. get. You need to get wise to this. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for your tolerance. Thank you, uh, Councillor Osborne. We are obviously all very aware of those situations, and uh, this particular bit is about the DPD. I'm going to allow uh, Councillor De Bell to say something, and I'm going to allow uh, Councillor Amos to have a very quick um, comment on this as well as he has asked to. Uh, Councillor De Bell, um, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I object very strongly 
uh, to Councillor Osborne uh, suggesting that, uh, that I uh, and my colleagues on this, on this planning committee haven't got East Grinstead's uh, best interests at heart. We have objected and fought against the development down in Felbridge. We have objected to and fought against the development on Inverhorn Lane. We have fought and objected to the development on uh, Turners Hill Road. The plans that come out from uh, the government who insist on certain numbers for Mid Sussex have suggested a number of areas where uh, houses, housing can be built. They came out to full consultation with every single part of Mid Sussex. The list was finally formulated and included, as you know, some of these areas that we fought against. Now, there are consultations constantly going, uh, going forward. At the moment, tonight, our chairman will be talking about what the government are doing with their white paper to further force upon the nation more building. Now, we have been told, as Councillor Belsey said, that if we don't meet the targets for Mid-Sussex, there's no, there's no design to destroy East Grinstead, and I abhor the way that you suggested that I was in on that, that, that if we do not meet those targets, they will increase them, the government will, and they are finding every single way, any government, not just this one, to build more and more houses. And they are looking to remove more and more restrictions for anybody wants, that wants to stop that. Now it's very important that the friends who have visited us tonight to, to speak up against these developments know that we have fought those developments in the past. And there is every single one of the uh, committee here today committed to East Grinstead. Make no mistake about that. And I abhor the fact that you actually suggested that I'm not. Anyway, that's the situation. Now, if we don't uh, find some way to mitigate what the government are intending to do to produce more houses, especially at this time when we're in the midst of a pandemic and nobody knows where people are eventually going to want to live or not, then I believe that it could turn out that the housing will be built in the wrong, the wrong places anyway. But that's the sort of thing. That's the sort of discussion we have. We don't get involved in rhetoric just for the sake of people that are listening in. We get involved in practical matters for the benefit of our town. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Uh, okay, Councillor Amos, if you'd like a uh, quick. Um, thank you. I think it's very important to back the government's proposals in their white paper. As I have said before, East Grinstead house prices are 16 times average East Grinstead wages. It is absolutely essential to get at least these 770 houses built because it's all very well for property owners who see their house prices go up and up and up because of restricted development. But it's absolutely essential to allow people in East Grinstead to actually get on the housing ladder. And the only way that's going to be done is by building more houses. Yes, there are issues with traffic. Mr. Osborne or Councillor Osborne rather, and I'm not denying that, and I think public services probably will be slightly worse, but that is a price that must be paid for greater home ownership. I back the government's white paper on this 100%, and I would urge every single councillor on this committee to do the same. It is the best thing this government has produced in the last two years in which it has been in power. Thank you very much. Thank you. We haven't actually started discussing the uh, white paper yet, but uh, we're the DPD. But um, thank you for your uh, for your views. Um, so I think we're at a fairly good place here with the DPD that everyone is basically receiving from the same sheet. We are objecting. If you are happy with the objection letter that and response that we are putting for the regulation 19, could you please raise your hand in support committee? Thank you. 
very quickly, as it's a lot more complex, and I don't think, uh, I don't know how many of you have read through the full white paper, but the white paper response uh, for the reform on planning, we have answered the questions that have come out of that white paper. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to read through those uh, and uh, formulate that. I'd like to propose that we submit that. Can I have a second for that response, please? Thank you, Councillor DeBell. Are there any comments or questions on that? It is obviously quite difficult one to kind of do concisely because it is a very long, very complicated document. But are there any questions on that? No. In that case, can I have a show of hands in support of that response, please? Sorry, my hand was waving. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you. Uh, we've got two hands in that case. Uh, Councillor Belsey and then Councillor Roddy. I just wanted to thank. I just wanted to thank you, Chairman, and uh, the Town Club for all your work on our behalf in uh, pulling together, uh, going through that white paper and pulling together, um, you know, a very challenging subject and a very important subject uh, for, for all the work that you've done on our behalf. Thank you very much. Councillor Roddy. Uh, sorry, Jack. I was just about to say that, actually. Sorry. <laughs> all the thanks today. All the thanks. Um, it's all the town clock. She's, uh, she's brilliant. OK, in that case, can we have a show of hands, please, in support? Thank you. OK, um, let's go on to uh, what's normally not contentious, but might have an odd contentious one in today. Let's, um, I'm just going to share my screen committee. Um, Hopefully you will all be able to see that now. Um, let's pop you all over here. If I'm looking to the side, it's because I put you on a second screen or your lovely faces. Um, let's go on to protected tree applications. We have 11 protected tree applications today. This is probably a record for trees. Um, normally we would support approval subject to no adverse comments by the, uh, the tree officer. Um, I'm going to propose that. Can I have a second and then we can take extra comments on any of them? Councillor DeBell. Um, does anyone want to make any separate comments on any of these applications in particular? Councillor Mrs. Mockford, I assumed your hand, I went straight to it. Oh, can't hear you. Unmute. I'm, I'm struggling because I've got an iPad and a phone. Getting reverb on both, but never mind. So, yeah, I would like to particularly um, like to single out DM twenty thirty o two, which is the three hundred year old cedar tree, which Mid Sussex would like to fell to the ground as close as possible. Um, apparently, it, it has Syracoccus, which is a blight and not threatening to this 300 year old tree. Um, they can live with Syracoccus for many years as long as they are looked at every year. There shouldn't be a problem. I am also concerned that on the, on the drawing, they have noted the words play area. And there is no play area there, it's just a green space. I feel really, really strongly about this one and I really, really feel that we should not be allowing this to be cut down at all. It's a high amenity value tree. That's all I Thank have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll note those comments. Can you mute you again stop that reverb, please? Thank you. Um, Councillor Woodgate and then Councillor Rowley, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I was just um, have some concerns about the cherry tree, DM203016. Um, I, I, I can't see why it's being cut down, but if it is being cut down because it's diseased, then I'd like to see one put back in its place, please. Thank you. Councillor Roddy. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'd, I'd like to sec second that, um, my thoughts really on the cedar tree uh, from Councillor Mockford, um, and also second that uh, 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 viewpoint for the cherry tree, plus the, the um, ash fell as well in Harvest Hill. Um, 
I, I don't know why people want to keep cutting these trees down, to be honest with you, Chair. I'm vehemently against it. Thank you. I think the policy of this committee has always been, well, at least it's my chair, that we only want to see a dangerous or severely unhealthy tree removed. Um, any Chairman, other can, I, can I butt in a second on the cherry tree, please? Um, I apologise. The application is actually from East Grinstead Town Council, so therefore we can't make a comment on it. But having said that, the reason that we're putting the application form in, the application to do this, is that the works otherwise would be done by West Sussex County. And yes, that is one of the things that we insist from West Sussex County. Those cherry trees have to be replanted. So that will be a condition that has to, has to, be, has to be followed. So yes, it, it, don't, don't worry about the cherry tree. It actually is dying or dead and it needs to be replaced. And that's what's going to happen. Perfect. Thank you. In that case, I think we are we happy to, uh, with those additional comments on the cedar tree and the, the ash, of course, you know, one on the cherry tree now, to uh, support approval subject to no adverse comment from the tree officer. So can I have a show of hands in support of that, please, committee? Thank you. Gender out the way, isn't it? Put all of those on there. No. Right, and the trees cut down to the printed versions. Um, okay, so we've got DM 20, 2756. This is for the moorings. Uh, Town clerk, please, could I be removed and brought back in? Councillor Bell, if you would like to uh, show this. Uh, Town clerk, are you okay to bring up your screen to show? Yes, I will, I will do, Chair. I've just got to remove the co host from you first and then I can put you in the waiting room. <laughs> right, um, now it gets a slightly more complicated as I need to now bring my screen up. Oops. screen there we go hopefully you can see the screen now committee yes can you see the screen yes yes we can Lovely. thank you, very much. Thank you. It's a little complicated because i've got your pictures in front of me and the screen so it's a little complex here um, but there you go vice chair Thank you very much indeed, uh, Town Clerk. Um, an excellent picture of the chef. <laughs> Can we drop down, uh, drop down one? Uh, excellent, thank you. Uh, as you can see, um, this is uh, to put a Velox window into the side, and there is one objection from a neighbour, um, who, who, and it is regarded as being overbearing. Uh, but it's a pretty simple plan. Uh, it's a pretty simple design. Uh, I would uh, I would ask perhaps uh, if Councillor Oswald would like to lead us on this one. Uh, yes, yes, if I may. Um, I visited uh, I visited the house. Uh, I've seen where the window is proposed. It certainly overlooks and looks right right into the ladies' dining room, sitting room. Um, and originally, when that house was built, not the house, uh, the applicant's house was built. Um, there was a condition that there wouldn't be a window there overlooking. So I take the view and uh, I will propose that um, we recommend that the, the application be rejected. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Othwell. Can I have uh, a second to that proposal, please? Councillor Odie, thank you very much indeed. And would anybody else like to discuss this or come forward to say anything else? In which case, can we have a the show. Can I, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, can I, can I... Oh, sorry, Councillor Belsey, carry on. Sorry. I you see you no, I was only, I was only going to agree. I, I mean, I think the condition that was opposed in the 96 application just said that um, no alterations could be made to the house or roof without um, town council permission or district council permission to do so. And the reason being for that was to protect the, uh, the, the neighbours in Stanton Close. Um, and so I was just going to agree that uh, just because 20 years or so has passed doesn't make it any 
more right that they should have that ability to do that and um you know severely impact the neighboring amenity and so therefore i was wanted to support the objection but just making it clear about the condition thank you thank you very much indeed councillor Belsey. councillor mock would you like to say something i'm really struggling here because i've got a phone like i say um i really object to this actually i overbearing and and the poor neighbor she's just going to lose the the amenity of her house and i really think we should reject this or refuse thank you very much indeed uh town clock can you capture those uh things to do with our objections yes i've got that I've got that. With the original um the original um, uh, statement thank you very much indeed uh can i therefore have a show of hands to support uh our recommendation of rejection. That's carried. Thank you very much indeed. And can we invite our chairman back in, please? On his way. Bless you. Thank you. Could you make me... Uh, yes, sorry, Chair. ...co-host again and I can share my screen. Okay. 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 So let's get back to it. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair, for covering for me on that one. So we shall now um, move to uh, DM twenty twenty eight twenty six. This is the home base site on London Road. Um, nice, no, nice non-contentious one for the evening, isn't it? Um, this is external alterations to the existing retail unit, removal of entrance canopy and installation of full height glazing to shop front, replacement roof with solar panels, construction of new delivery bay and reconfiguration of customer car park to provide trolley storage, covered cycle parking and car parking for disabled and parents to allow occupation of the store class one a food store retailing convenience and comparison goods um i think most of you probably know the home base site fairly well and probably heard what they want to do so this one has become a little and change the shop fronts to look like this um i will zoom up for you on the uh change to the uh, car parking which actually isn't that much of a change from the current home base layout um, yeah, that's what I've got plans on there. Just make it look like this. So this is uh, Inverhall. So, uh, Councillor Osborne, would you like to uh, start us off? Uh, yeah, um, I don't know that we can resist this. I don't think we've got um, any grounds really for um, stopping this happening. So we want to be as constructive as possible to make it work. But I will say that uh, I think from the face of you missed. Um, there's not another store like it in the town. Um, they sell a lot of stuff that you, together, you probably got to travel to several shops for. Um, I've not always been complimentary of the place, but I'll be, I'll be sorry to see it go. Um, we need another food store? Possibly not, maybe. More choice for people. But um, I think that from what I see of the plans, that um, I can't see an obvious support with them. So. Uh, I suppose I reluctantly would say that I would um, support approval of this. Could I have a second for that, please, from committee? Okay, Councillor Mrs. Rockford. Anybody want to speak further on this? Councillor Rody. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I just wanted to um, uh, raise the subject about um, traffic uh, and the home base is a totally different shop in terms of footfall compared to a supermarket. And I'm just concerned that there's gonna, it's gonna have a, a negative impact on the safety of people in that area um, or in the immediate vicinity of the, of the scheme. And I'm just uh, wondering whether the, uh, we as a, a committee can ask uh, Little to provide um, more details on, on what they're proposing in terms of 
um, you know, uh, traffic uh, and car usage into the shop and whether they can um, help potentially uh, with um, options for another sort of sustainable route via St Margaret's Loop. Um, I don't know whether the, the council can do any, uh, the committee can ask for that. Interesting points, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bell. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but I didn't quite uh, get the recommendation. Well, are we actually recommend, uh, are we actually um, suggesting that this is, this is allowed? Yes. Uh, so yeah, Councillor Osborne has suggested that we support approval. Um, and that's been seconded as well. That has. Bless you, thank you very much. I just wanted to, uh, if, if I might make some comments, Mr Chairman. Uh, first of all, um, if Homebase are going to sell this store, then uh, then there's there's not a lot we can do about it. I think it's a terrible shame. I think that uh, in fact um, Homebase has done a great job supplying uh, a need in our town, and I'm not too sure personally that we need another German discount store in town uh, in East Grinstead. However they are not planning reasons. Our planning reasons, as raised by Councillor Odi, is to do with uh, traffic and uh, increased activity along the road there. And I personally think that uh, with the, the problems that already exist with people turning the wrong way into Aldi and things like that, that this cause, could cause uh, quite serious problems with people getting in and out of little and it's it's I'm mindful that uh, we do need something there um, but and I know that other stores have been offered this location uh, but in terms of planning reasons as raised by Councillor Odi I think that this could could cause uh, enormous problems on this road so I shall vote against this thank you thank you um, I, uh, I, I hear the comments being made and I, I agree with a lot of them. I, I think the loss of home base will be very negative to our town, especially as home base in Crawley's gone, being cute in financial trouble in, in Crawley as well. Um, and I think there is a need, unfortunately, probably Amazon is destroying that need for a lot of people, but there is a need for it. I can't really find anything as a planning reason to refuse this on. Uh, apart from potentially increased traffic onto the road uh, and there isn't really a significant change in, 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 the, in the, the documentation on this application there isn't significant they're not expecting significant uplift I don't feel uh, whether there will be or not I don't know the capacity is not often for weekends I guess it is at home base but not in the week where I guess it could be busier all the time so we may want to bounce it back to ask that but I think, we, I think we will struggle, but I, I'm not personally in favour of the, the change, but I'm not sure there's going to be enough. Uh, but I, would, I wouldn't support it in its current guise. So we have a proposal to approve it on the table. Can we have a vote to approve, please? Okay, that has failed. Can we have a counter proposal, please? Answer the bell. Mute, sir. You're Sorry, muted. guys, I keep forgetting to unmute myself. <laughs> Can I propose that for the reasons, uh, very valid reasons, of um, uh, increased traffic along that particular part of London Road and the difficulties getting in and out, the difficulties of, of uh, extra traffic parking, etc. Uh, that uh, we recommend refusal. I would like to second that. And I would like to add in Councillor Odie's very valid comments that we potentially look at tying in. Uh, we would like to see increased alternative um, transport methods put in, potentially linking into the Margaret's Loop in the future. Um, but as, as it currently stands, yeah. The common application isn't 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 good enough on transport. What would your look? You, I know that look, Town Clerk. That's your you'd look like. 
<laughs> Are you happy with that as an answer? Not, not at all. I'm very happy. Very happy. It's okay. Yeah. Right. In that case, can I show up hands in support for refusal on the grounds of traffic? Thank you. Okay. I fear that we may lose that debate. Those uh, against? And those against, yeah. Uh, that's going to be you and you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, it was enough to pass it. Um, I feel we may lose this argument long term, but uh, I think the warning shot should at least be said. Certainly will. Um, okay, let's go on to DM 20, 2876. This is Heatherly Cranston Road. Uh, this is a roof extension hip to gable to include dormer and roof windows, ground floor extension to front hallway. Um, everything is on the, the one plan here, really. Um, so there is literally just this one plan. So this is the current uh, front and rear. Here shows the new uh, roof line, new porch area. So not massive changes, to be really, really honest. Uh, but this is Town Ward, so Councillor Woodgate. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I've, had, I've thought long and hard about this one. Um, I know um, the hip to Gable End actually um, come, becomes quite close to the house next door, and the house next door does have a um, has a window that looks... Um, over towards this house and by changing the hip to a gable you suddenly become very close taking the light from the neighbor the neighbors um, although I have no problem with the, the ground floor extensions at all I feel the um, extensions into the roof especially um, I can only see on the right hand side at the moment but um, are, are, are I feel um, overbearing and unneighborly so I would look to refuse this one Okay, thank you. Can I have a second for that, please? Councillor Bell. Any other comments that committee wants to make? Councillor Odie. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, can I just can we, uh, ask Councillor Woodgate, um, how close is that house to the neighbours? Does that help at all? Yeah, it does. Um, and just to, for clarification, have there been other alterations to those houses on that road? There have been other changes to the houses, um, but the way the, the houses are set out, the, the house next to the right of Heatherly has had an extension, I believe, in the past into the roof um, and does have a window that overlooks he Heatherly, but it is um, one single window, and I believe it's about eight to ten foot from just dry, having dry, you know, walking past and driving past. Um, I obviously haven't been there with a tape measure recently, but um, I, I, ju I just felt it was too close with, when you've gone from a hip to a gable end. It just seemed quite imposing and quite unneighbourly. And there's no objections? There's no objections, no. Not that I saw yet, um, yesterday evening when I looked. No, there's, there are there are there are no objections currently. Okay, so we've got a proposal to refuse on. Uh, well, we don't really use unneighbourly, so we'll, I guess we would go with uh, EG three A poor design and overbearing. Um, can I show hands in support of refusal on those grounds, then, please? Okay, and I'm for it. No, okay. Uh, so that has been refused on that. Okay. Uh, so this is DM 20, 2890. This is uh, 9 Greenhurst Drive, proposed single story rear extension. Uh, this is uh, Greenhurst Drive, this is a, uh, I think the plan showed all, this is an infill to the side, extension bifolds and little roof lanterns. Uh, so this is Ash Platts, so Councillor DeBell. 
Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, I think this is pretty straightforward. It's at the rear. It's not bothering anybody. And I propose that we uh, recommend acceptance. Have a second for that, please. Councillor Watford. Any comments on this? No, I've got no problem with this. I'll show up hands in support. Thank you. Uh, DM 2914, 20, the PO that has been removed, that has been withdrawn. There's a letter on the portal for its withdrawal. Um, so uh, I would like to apologise to committee. I sent the wrong version to you all, I just realised it has the one on the very back missing from Moat Road. So you may not see the plans for the Moat Road one. Um, I missed them off the back when I first did it and I've had it add it on you've got the wrong version sorry um dm 20 2761 this is the former telephone exchange in Bahorn lane demolition demolition of existing telephone exchange and erection of two-story dwelling and this is next to the car park uh opposite wicks etc uh knocking down the old telephone exchange which probably a lot of you drive past but never ever noticed um it currently looks like this, and they wish to put a little dwelling in uh, panels, etc., on the roof, like this. Uh, again, in Bahorn. So, Councillor Osborne, would you like to uh, kick me yeah. off? <laughs> Can you point out the on street, the off street parking for this place for me? Uh, no. Right, so there's no off-street parking. There's going to be no car park next door before long. There's going to be 550 houses possibly up the road. I'm not no. saying that. I'm not saying that there isn't going to be off-street parking. I'm saying I can't show you because I'm not sure whether there is or not going from the plans. Yeah. I think in the, the position that house is, it must have off-street parking. I don't think there's any excuse for that not to be the case. Um, if it's got off-street parking, then it it makes sense just to put a little house in a derelict site. But if, if there's no parking at all, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's acceptable. That's a busy road. That's as you turn around at the traffic lights, um, opposite Wicks, um, whoever buys the house, I suppose you've got to p find and park it somewhere. And I can't think of any place to park a car other than illegally, if you like, in Wicks's car park or whatever. Um, once that once that car park next door is gone, don't you think so, Mr. Chairman? Um, As another inborn councillor, there are letters of support from local residents for this, for tidying up a derelict and overgrown site. No, I, I, uh, and there are people who would like to see a house there, and I guess the counter argument could be that seeing a nice house there rather than this could be more attractive and maybe they could take a leaf from Countess Rody's book and they could cycle or walk to destinations they need to. Uh, I know that is cloud cuckoo land and they will have a car. Um, I am personally unsure of parking so I would I would personally as a fellow in Bourne County say I would support building on this site but only with adequate or at least one car parking space included. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. That's all I would ask for. Okay. Can I have a second for that? Then? If you want, do you want to second that, Councillor Rossman? Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah. Um, any other comment on that from Commission? Councillor Bell. Councillor Bell. Yeah. I can see your hand. I think Hello, you're already that? unmuted, Councillor Bell. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm unmuted. Yes, sorry. Was that was that me, Chairman? Were you saying <laughs> allow me to speak? Yes. Bless you. Thank you very much. This seems a really tidy space and a really tidy house that they're, they're, they're sticking on here. And uh, and as we've said, uh, I don't know whether Dickens is going to put a car in there as well. So uh, I, you know, I've, I've sort of looked at this very carefully. Uh, I, I, I struggle to think that it's, it's viable, really. But however, there we go. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Roby. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I agree with uh, those comments, uh, Chair. It's just to really add a little bit of um, numbers. It's EG12 is the neighbour car parking. So I would, um, 
I would again uh, echo your comments and Councillor Osborne's about there must be off street parking. On street parking, uh, on street parking is definitely not not great down there. There isn't any. There'll be a line right in front of it. So we'd only so we would only support approval subject to adequate car parking being provided. Okay, can I show of hands in support of that, please? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're going to DM 20, uh, 2855, 31A North End, uh, London Road. These are amended plans. We have seen these before and we supported approval. I've got to be really honest, uh, I, I, I'm struggling to see the difference in the amended plans. They are so small. Um, it, it's really technical differences. Um, we supported approval before. I would like to recommend that we hold to our original decision as nothing significant has changed. I'll second it. Thank you. And show of hands in support of that. Uh, okay, so oh, back into town for DM 20, 2960. This is 29 Blackwell Road, single story extension to side of dwelling and lot conversion. Uh, this is the, the property here on Blackwell Road as you come down towards uh, East Court and the cemetery on the left. And these are some of the plans. So this is the, the current plans. And this is the proposed extension. You can see the blue line dotted showing the outline of the, uh, the original dwelling on there. Uh, so this is town, so Councillor Woodgate. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, and uh, another, another interesting one on the same road. Um, I actually know the property. I um, had friends there that lived there many years ago, uh, no longer living there, but um, the property itself is actually currently quite small and not um, not uh, overly useful as a family house. So um, I actually do quite like this plan, um, although it does raise the roof and go to well, uh, extend the roof out towards the to the right hand side. Um, there are no letters of objection. It is set back from the house to its left, so it's not intruding on that one at all. And it is the way the road slopes downwards. Um, all the houses are kind of staggered down. So um, I think this is a good use of the space. It's going to make it into a far more usable family um, home and something that's going to give it some longevity. So I would actually like to push this one for approval. Thank you. Could I have a second for that, please? Councillor Mrs. Rockford. Um, any other comments on this one? Councillor Dooley? I'm, I'm, I'm not against it at all. I'm just, I, I think this is, to call this a loft conversion is, is quite extensive, isn't it? Because it's, um, it looks, almost looks like a whole, it's, it's massive, isn't it? <laughs> the, the extension they're doing in, in the upstairs part. I guess, as you say, it's not going up higher than the, the top of the ridge height, but looking at that sort of dotted line of the original building and looking at the size of the roof conversion that's going on that, that's quite, that's quite dramatic in, in, the, in the scope of, of loft conversion, isn't it? It seems... I've got, I'm not opposed to it in any way at all. I think it's 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 a good use, but I just I just find that the the use of the term loft conversion quite sort of you know it's, it's, it just seems quite dramatically yeah. bigger than what I would expect a loft conversion if I'm honest. But that's that's my my opinion. But no, I'm, I'm <laughs> totally supportive of it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess technically it is a loft conversion, just a bit of one. Yeah. Okay. In that case, can I have a show of hands in support of this application, please? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome the town mayor to the meeting. Welcome, town mayor. Thank you for coming late. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you for coming. Um, next one is uh, DM twenty thirty twenty two. This is an advertising application for Four King Street East Grinstead. This is one internally illuminated fascia and one uh, non internally illuminated projector. So uh, I think we all know this site and we all know
So advertising only, this is not whether we think we should have another pizza place there or not, this is purely the advertising. Um, so this is town, so Council Woodgate. Thank you again, Chair. Uh, yeah, I have no problems with it at all. It's using their branding. It's it's similar to the others we have in the town. So um, I ha it's not in the conservation area or anything like that. So I'm happy to push for approval on this one. Thank you. Can I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Bell. Any other comments? Can I show a hand? Oh, Councillor Dooley, was that you had any comment? Yeah, I was just going to say it's actually nice to see that it's actually going to be utilised. It's been sitting dormant for way too long, so fully supportive of that. Cool. Uh, can I have a show of hands and support? Thank you. Okay. Um, right, so this is DM 20, 2917, 62 Fairlawn Drive. Uh, proposed dormer to the first floor side elevation to enlarge the existing bedroom and en suite. Um, this is Inverhorn, uh, Council Osborne, if you're okay, I'll kick this one off if you've had a couple. Um, this is again very standard, isn't it? Committee, we see these a lot. This is actually quite a modest one in comparison. They've actually put a dormer on and kept the, the sloping side the same rather than squaring it off. Um, so I have absolutely no problem with this uh, in its current form. Uh, there are no objections to it, so I would support approval. Uh, can I have a second for that? Are there any objections, Mr. Chairman? No. Okay. Any other comments at all? No show of hands in support. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Some wonderful plans. Uh, this is DM 20, 2979. This is 39 North End London Road. This is proposed dropped curb to front of property. Um, so the plans are basically, this is the plans. <laughs> There's two drawings that are exactly the same one with more words than the other one. Um, so they want to drop the curb down next to Knighthood House down there. Uh, Councillor Osborne, would you like this one? Is it the symbol? Well, plenty of people along London Road park their cars along there in their front gardens. Um, uh, if you can get a car in there, and you, then I think it's probably a good idea. Um, it's a narrow road. You wouldn't want anybody parking outside there even temporarily. So uh, it's a small price, uh, a drop curb to uh, get somebody off the road. So I'd uh, recommend uh, approval. I'll second that. Any comments at all? That comment, Councillor Bell? In that case, show up hands in support. He's eager, he wants his tea. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is DM 20 30 14. This is 80 Woodbury Avenue. Installation of second floor front facing dormer. Change in colour of roof tiles to dark grey from brown. Uh, so this is the addition of a second dormer on the property. Um, that's not as small, isn't it? Yes. Um, again, not the hugest amount of plans, but you can see the existing and the proposed roof line changes there. Um, Councillor Bell, would you like to kick us off on this one? Happy to, Mr Chairman. Uh, there are no objections on the portal. Uh, it looks uh, a good use of space. Uh, I see no reason to object to it, so I would recommend that we recommend exactly. I would like to second that. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, Town Mayor. Thank you, Town Mayor. Any other comments at all? Councillor Odie. Uh, thanks, Chair. What, why do they want to change the roof tiles? Uh, aesthetics. I imagine um, there's a lot of there's a lot of houses now going back to sort of slate or grey looking roof tiles rather than the red or the concrete roof tiles. Grey roof tiles uh, can look much more heritage. They can look much more modern as well. So. Um, it's a fashion at the moment, as concrete tiles were in the past, but often, especially a lot of Victorian houses, not this one is, but they put um, 
inappropriate roof tiles onto properties that could be far too heavy for the roofs, a lot of lighter weight roofs going on, better insulation, roof tiles, all sorts of reasons. Great, thank you. Mainly probably because it looks more modern. Uh, I imagine the windows will go grey in line with this as well, probably. <laughs> um, okay, in that case, can I show of hands in support, please? Thank you. Okay, remaining in Ashplatz, we're going to go to DM 20, 30, 35. This is 22 Fulmer Drive. Uh, this is a proposed two-storey side extension with associated roof extension comprising new ground floor, kitchen, diner and master bedroom suite above. Extension to front porch, new cladding finish to porch elevation, side elevation and partial rear elevation and raised decking area. Hope you're all paying attention to that. Um, I think we can see quite clearly here from the original house, the new proposed uh, side to it. And again, the change to the back of the house and side. Um, I think that's it. Oh, there's a, an aerial shot to show the, uh, the new floor layouts. Uh, Councillor De Bell, would you like to uh, kick us off? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I, I looked at this very, very carefully because it looks like an enormous addition uh, to this little house just there. And uh, East Grinston Society are, are, are um, vehement that they feel it's unneighbourly and they recommended that we recommend the refusal uh, on, on the grounds that it, it looks unneighbourly. However, Seeing as there are no objections on the portal, and the neighbour, the neighbours haven't objected to it, uh, all all one can say is that this looks like uh, a good use of space to produce uh, more living room in uh, in what will be a really nice house. And so I see absolutely no reason on on planning grounds, as long as nobody does object to it to recommend and refusal. And therefore, uh, on that, I would recommend that we recommend acceptance. Thank you, can I have a second for that? I, I will second that. Um, I would like to just, before we make any comment, I would like to, to remind the committee and members of any public that are watching that the Eagles Society have no, they're not a consultee they are not planning experts. They are just a group of people that send comments in. Um, they do a lot of good work, I know, but they are not planning experts in this. So we do have to be mindful of citing their, their comments or suggestions because they are just a group of people sending comments in, <laughs> ultimately. Um, so yes, so are there any other comments that want to be made on, on this? I would agree with Councillor De Bell on this that I think it is uh, making it into a, a large modern family home that will probably see that family for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, can, I, can I show of hands in support, please? Okay, DM2059, uh, this is the Oak Lodge standing close. First floor dormer side extension and internal alterations. And it's down at the bottom standing close. And this is, um, again, this is an, an addition of uh, a dormer and a small extension. Uh, you're a busy boy, Councillor Osborne. Would you like to start this one? Well, first of all, are there any objections on this one? No. Uh, are we any uh, overlooking problems? I'm trying to see from the plan here. Are there any overlooking problems, do you think? Uh, no, I would say there are already windows facing in the direction that the dormers are facing. They're just making it a bit more roof light. Yeah. Okay, fine. All right, then, well, I'll recommend, um, I'll recommend approval for this one if it's um, uncontroversial. I'll second that. Um, any other comments on that at all? Can I show up hands in support, please? Thank you. 
You're doing well, Katie. It's a long meeting tonight. You're doing well. No one's fallen asleep just yet, I don't think. Uh, this is DM203080. This is a variation of condition on 9 Maple Drive. Variation of condition number two of planning permission DM192165 to amend the approved plans to include a small lobby in order to house the downstairs WC. Uh, this is Ashplatz, so Councillor DeBell. It's, uh, it's totally uh, acceptable. I think it's uh, reasonable uh, what they want to do. It makes very little uh, change to the original plans. There are no objections on the board, so I suggest that we recommend acceptance. I will second that. Uh... Thank you, Tamir. Thank you, Tamir. Uh, any other comments on this? No. And uh, in that case, can I show up hands in support, please? Thank you. It is an Ash Platz and Imberholm dominated evening tonight, isn't it? Uh, this is DM203085. Uh, Again, in Ash Platz, this is 67 Escorts Drive. Uh, single story front extension uh, to provide a little porch area to the house. Um, you can see the new, uh, new extension to the front. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think it looks a, a decent tidying up. Uh, there are no objections on the portal. I think again, it will it will make uh, uh, quite a nice uh, addition to what is a family home. So I would suggest that we recommend uh, acceptance. Okay. Yeah, I will also uh, recommend uh, our second this uh, motion. There's it's not an unneighborly and no. Problem with the neighbor, so I second it. Thank, Thank you very much. much. <laughs> uh, I assume there's no comments, Missy. Show of hands and support. Thank you. Okay, it's the final straight. Uh, DM twenty thirty one eleven. This is Herentai. This is 89 Dunnings Road, East Winstead, a uh, demolition of existing garage and shed with replacement garage outbuilding. Um, I didn't get pictures, but uh, this shows the <coughs> current buildings and new garage. Uh, Councillor Eddy, please. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have any objections to this. So I would uh, recommend uh, approval. I think uh, they're just trying to improve the existing um, units that they've already got there. Thank you. Can I have a second for that, please? Councillor Dooley, thank you. Any other comments from committee on this? Can I have a show of hands and support, please? Thank you. So I should show you that plan there that shows the garage and the shed amalgamating. Sorry, I missed that one off. But um, okay, DM twenty thirty one fourteen. This is Herentai. This is fifty five Dunnings Road. Single story rear extension with pitch roof, placing current single story rear extension. I'd like to just comment that these are a very lovely set of plans. These are some people put a lot of effort into these plans. Uh, I've highlighted some of the some of the pictures to show you. Um, but one of the things that the town just sort of was on this, that the town clerk and I did to the white paper response was that we wanted 3D drawing and some better quality plans. And this planning application really does show the benefits of being able to see what something looks like. Hmm. Uh, so this is the current property from the front. This is the current rear of the property. And then this is the proposed new extension on the back. Uh, again, showing it from the side, and an aerial showing the new uh, the new space. I think the one that really needs to show it is this one here that shows the old lean to gone and the new extension on the back. Uh, Councillor Rodi, 
Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, no, I think it's a, a, a lovely modification. They make a change to the, to the back of the house. Uh, 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 go for approval, please. A second. Councillor uh, Town Mayor, I think your hands up first. Um, any other comments on this at all? Right. In that case, can I have a show of hands in support, please? Thank you. Okay, the last one here that I did miss off the original set drawings that I sent you. So um, if you're going off the one that I sent you, it's not on there. DM 20 31 34. This is 84 Moat Road. This is a single story rear um, extension. So this is the house right next to the pond. And uh, again, this is uh, an extension across the back of the house in addition to uh, an extension that looks like it's already there. Um, this is Town Ward, so Councillor Woodgate, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, a simple one, this one. Nice little extension to the back, uh, uh, helping the homeowners. No, doesn't overlook anybody. Um, no objections, so I'm happy to go for approval on this one. Thank you. Can I have a second? That's a lot quick, thank you. Any other comments at all? No, can we have a show of hands in support, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, committee. I'd like to, that's the end of uh, the meeting. I would like to uh, let you know that the next meeting will be held on Wednesday, the 7th of October, and I will close the meeting at 8.36.